All right, today's um, uh, trend that we're going to look at is on electron affinity. So electron affinity is different than like uh, ionization energy. Electron affinity is the energy absorbed when an electron is added to an atom to form a negative ion. So it's a measure of the atom's ability to form negative ions. So whereas uh, ionization from yesterday is the energy needed to remove an electron to form a positive ion. So electron affinity can be talked in terms of both its behavior and its energy value. Basically, if the electron affinity value is greater than zero, it's endothermic and its energy is absorbed and it's not favored, therefore it has a low affinity. If the electron affinity value is less than zero, energy is being released, exothermic, and adding an electron is, makes it stable and is highly favorable, therefore it has a high affinity. High affinity to form a negative ion or low affinity to form a negative ion. So simple idea, electron affinity, measure of an atom's ability to form negative ions. We can look at the little chart here that's both shaded and has our values in terms of kilojoules per mole. You can see as you go across the periods, there are some um, anomalies that stand out. Um, and again, it has to do with those filled and half-filled subshells. Um, as you go across the general trend, again, we're only consider considering the general trend. So in general, electronegativity values the value, energy values for electron affinity, excuse me, um, decrease, therefore they have a high affinity, meaning, you know, energy is actually released in this process and therefore it likes to form negative ions. So negative values means high affinity, okay? Po more positive values, negative 48 is more positive than negative 324, more positive value indicates low affinity, meaning it takes a lot of energy to add an electron. Okay. So you can get them, uh, say it one way or the other. You can either say the more negative it is, the higher the electron affinity, and the more positive, the lower the electron affinity. Again, we can um, look at these uh, interactive uh, periodic table and we can um, graph out these for us, um, which is kind of nice to look at. Uh, and so it gives it to you in the best um, way possible. In this, in this case, it's a cross line. So the general trend is that they do increase whether you're talking about the metals increasing and then the non-metals increasing. So both metals and non-metals increase even though this has a higher electron affinity than these elements here. So for example, if you look at Krypton compared to copper, um, and you do see a slight dip in the trend here and here is because of where those electrons are going into those d orbitals, they're partially filled. Okay. And then as you go down the group, you can see that the values go decrease as you go down the group. Okay, so we can see that they're decreasing trends as you go down the group. So if we put them in order based on their electrons affinities in terms of their energy values from least to greatest, you'll want to make a second tab again, pull up those two slides where I have all the trends that are labeled for you so you can look at the trends, look at your periodic table where the elements are located, and then you'll want to hit pause so you can take a moment to think about it. So aluminum, magnesium, silicon, and sodium. Aluminum, magnesium, silicon, and sodium. They're all in the same period. So put them in order from, of their electron affinity from least to greatest in terms of energy values. And then hit pause and then check yourself. So if you said silicon has less electro negative electron affinity value than sodium, you are correct. So it has a higher affinity to form a negative ion and this has a lower affinity because this has a more negative value and this has a more positive value.
Okay, what about these? So we have oxygen, polonium, selenium, and sulfur. So if you look at the periodic table, those are elements in the same group. Put them in, term, in order from least to greatest in terms of their energy values. Hit pause and then check yourself. So we see that oxygen has a smaller value, therefore it has a higher, more negative value, therefore it has a higher affinity to form a negative ion than polonium. 